Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to pass some information uh, to our declarative action so that from the declarative action we can receive it to our customer event. So if you see that uh, we have created a declarative action so that whenever you click that multiple options like multiple buttons and then click the result, the pop-up is opening and this is great, right? Now, whenever we'll click that uh, result button, the system should know that which uh, which all or which uh, this incident should be take the action for which this incident should be take the action right the first thing is that uh, if you recall that our previous session um, what we did actually we have created a client state parameter called incident record so this is the client state parameter called incident record and this initial value is right now blank right so this in initial uh, value of this client state parameter is blank uh, you might be know that what is the client state parameter. Um, so client state parameter is a uh, simple page level variable. We have discussed earlier also. So it's a page level variable where you can put some value to your um, uh, to your these variables, right? So we have created a client state parameter inside the client state parameter called incident records. The initial value is right now blank. Okay, and this client state parameter actually we are printing our here in this pop up. So in this pop up, the second uh, text box is that uh, you can see. Uh, the value now what we are doing that so if you go back to our home page uh, so in that body uh, we are actually doing what whenever this custom event is calling call incident resolve uh, pop-up so this custom event is calling these have a one parameter called incident IDs so this is the one parameter this parameter is what I am going to do that I am going to uh, copy this parameter value to our client state parameter that's what I am going to do that how can we do that so what we'll do here if you see that incident result pop up um, this is the uh, event handling mapping where actually that event definition is there so here we are actually declared that event and here we are saying that what we have to do we are saying that opening this model dialog that's the one thing another things we are saying that we are going to do a call update uh, client state parameter okay uh, which client state call incident record from where this value should be come up we'll click that binding and then we'll go to this event payload and we'll be able to see this incident ids what is this incident ids incident id is nothing but uh, that during this event handler we have defined uh, one uh, uh, you can see the payload field called incident id is the parameter field that is visible here so what we are saying that here under this um, event handler we are going that and we are saying that update client state parameter client state parameter called incident records and then value should be our uh, you know event payload and incident record this one and then we'll simply apply that so what will be happen if we click add so right now we have two uh, definition one whenever you call this incident resolve pop-up the pop-up should uh, our dialog model should be open and then update our client state parameter and what should be the client state parameter whatever we will receive in our event that will be our client state parameter once we receive that client state parameter that we are going to display our in this stylized text here so we will know that which all incident we are going to take a action we'll simply save that so in our um, ui builder level we have changes that now if you go to this declarative action under this declarative action as I told that action field map and in this action field maps one is the field called sys IDs. this sys ID is nothing but that store what all we are selecting I have shown you earlier like whenever you are selecting that and then if you add this here in this edit or somewhere you will be able to find out using this sys ID variable that we are going to call whenever we are going to call the event okay so here we are calling that we actually map that uh, this one right so what we are going to do that under this uh, we have a one thing called advanced view we have to click this advanced view under this once you click this advanced view you will be able to see that three tabs are available the first tab is called action attributes so in this action attribute you can see that one uh, payload map here it have called incident IDs from where this is coming this incident ID is coming when you define that um, specify client action or action payload you define that call payload call incident IDs that is coming so we are saying that that incident ID what should be the value we are saying that the value should be our sys ID okay how can we pass that sys IDs um, so we can just put hard put a high so that will be passed but we need to pass the sys ID 
to pass the CCID, we will paste that and remember that we have to put double braces. So, we will do the double braces. So, what will be happen in this payload incident IDs, we are passing the CCIDs and that CCIDs through this event mapping will come to this editor. Under this editor, we have a um, here called body and in this body, we have a event mapping. There, we will receive that. Okay. And once we receive that in this incident IDs, we'll update our client state parameter. And then once the client state parameter will be, uh, we will update that, we will be able to show under this uh, pop-up here. Okay. So let's update this one and see magic. Okay. Somehow this group by uh, is removed. Uh, that's okay. So if we go and refresh our uh, uh, workspace again, and let's say we are selecting two incident. So we have selected two incident and as the group by is removed, you can see it's moved to outside. And if you click the resolve button, what will be happen? Once we click the resolve button, these two CCID will be passed in our uh, here called uh, incident IDs and that will receive in our event and then it will update our client state parameter. So let's see, if we click the resolve button. So somehow this, uh, the CCID are not populating. Let's see why. So if I open that, we are passing that CCID. So we'll open that mapping here. So this is the mapping here. Uh, okay. So the thing is that I can see that one thing we have missed here that is called if we put that called type, we should push, put the type and then what should be the type? Type should be called uh, map container. So we'll put the map underscore container okay so this should be our type that we have not defined here so let's save that uh, and if we refresh here again and select resolve and on hold and click the resolve you can see that both the CCID we are receiving so we are receiving the CCID we are updating our client state what is the next step the next step is that uh, whenever we will uh, select this and then put some notes and click resolve we should uh, dissolve our uh, pop-up and then we should update our, uh, you know, uh, we call that record, right? So let's do that. For that, what we'll do, we'll go here under this data resources. We are going to create a new data resources and select update record. So this data resource, we are going to select that and we'll click add. What will be happen? A data resource will be uh, came up. Now, once this data or this system got updated, once this um, maybe for example, this incident got resolved, we need to be uh, dissolve this pop up. So that for that reason, we'll go to this event and then we are going to add one event mapping call. If success, what we are going to do that we are going to uh, open or close dialog model. This one, we want to turn off this dialog model of the resolve dialog model. So we want whenever the data is going to be successfully updated, we want to dissolve this pop-up. So that's the one thing. And then this update action needs to be called from where this update action needs to be called from our button. So whenever this button will be clicked, result button will be clicked, we should call this update uh, record uh, data resources, right? So we'll go back to here, call um, buttons here. Under this button, you can see that uh, we have a button click options here we'll add event handler and what we want to do that we want to uh, call our update record okay so we'll go here and then select the execute operation which table we want to update we want to update that incident table so we'll select the incident table okay now which record we want to update we want to update the record we'll select dynamically call uh, client state and incident records so that record we want to update and what value we want to update? The value we want to update first thing called state. So we'll select the state is resolve. So state is, we'll select that resolve. Okay. And then we want to update resolution code and resolution node. So we'll say that resolution code. And then from where we will get the resolution node? we should dynamically bind the resolution node but you can see that we cannot directly map anywhere from the we cannot get resolution code and resolution node directly from here so we'll do that um, just a bit and we want to set resolution node so the resolution code and resolution nodes we want to set but these two cannot uh, we cannot get because these are the input field we have created one is the drop down field another is the text area field we had to do something so that we can fetch this information so at the moment I 
leave that as a blank and then apply that so let's understand what we are doing that so whenever this button will be a call called resolve button we are going to call our update record and once we update successfully update we are going to dissolve this button or we are going to dissolve this pop-up and then we all during that updation part we need to pass this close code and close note so these two are in these two are input so we need to be do something so that we can pass this information to do that we'll go and then uh, in the client state parameter we are going to create two more client state parameter one we call say that uh, close okay so two client state parameter i have created one is called close code another is a close node now uh, these two client state parameter initial value is uh, empty but whenever you selected the drop down or whenever you put some value this client state parameter should be updated okay so let's first update that close uh, note the text area from the text area we are actually uh, putting the close note so we'll go here and then click add event mapping for text area and if you see the one of the tech, uh, event mapping called text area value set, whenever the text area value will be set, we want to do something. What do you want to do that? We want to update client state parameter. What client state parameter we want to update? We want to update the close node. And what should be the new value? The new value should be come up from this dynamically. We'll go and go to these events and then we can select the value. So this is how we can actually populate from the text area. So whenever you put something, whenever I put hello, hi, whatever, and then select other field, what will be happen this value will be copy and update our client state parameter or we can see the page variable similarly i had to do for drop down so you go to the drop down we'll click add drop down and then here you have a drop down selected item set so whenever you select anything we are going to update our client state parameter we'll select that what uh, uh, what item we want to update we want to update the close code and what should be the value it should be the dynamic value and from where it should go to the event payload and you can see that we have a, uh, a value that we want to set that so we'll add that okay so these two we have added right now so that's it so we have set two value now what we have to do um these two client state parameter will be updated and then uh, whenever we will call this button right so this is the from the button we are actually updating that right so here we need to uh, map this uh, client state parameter so we'll go here and then click here the bottom one is close node close node will be mapped with our client state parameter called close node and then this one close code will be mapped with our uh, client state called close code double click and apply okay so these two are done so what will be happen the pop-up will be dissolved that record will be updated but we need to refresh whole our data set we need to refresh this one uh, so that we can see the data again in a proper way so for that what we have to do we have to go back to our um, so this is the list control you can see using the list control we are actually doing uh, or we are getting the data so this is the list control from there we are getting the data so we need to refresh this list control data source we'll go here go to the event source and then we'll add one more handler called uh, we'll go here and then list control here we need to refresh this list control let's see if we have any option called refresh So you can see that under this uh, list control data refresh request is there. We'll just uh, add and done. So we have done a lot of things here. We'll just save these all these changes right now. And let's uh, clear our cache. So we'll go here because if you did a lot of stuffs, it's recommended sometime you clear your cache. So we'll clear our cache and then I'll clear my system cache also and right now you can see that 1001 this incident is in new state so if i go here you can see this is the new state incident right now the resolution code and resolution nodes are empty right now so what i'm going to do that i'm going to resolve this incident so let's resolve this incident so i just selected that 1001 incident and click resolve button a pop-up opens we'll select that duplicate we'll say that demo and then click uh, resolve you can see 
after clicking that it got refreshed and that incident got resolved if you open this incident in backend you can see the state got updated with that result state uh, with that um, duplicate and then demo with that value with the admin user as a result by and then resolved date so this way you can create a pop-up and you can do um, as per your requirement uh, you can call the declarative action and do functional as per your requirement so that's it for today if you have any questions let me know in my comment section thank you very much have a great day